Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we will talk about how to respond to injustice. In this world, there are very few things we control. And in a divine sense, there really isn't anything we control at all. That is except for our response to the events of our lives. Now think about this. Jesus is God and faced betrayal, humiliation, torture, and more at the hands of the people he ultimately had authority over. And yet, his response is unlike anyone I have ever met or will ever meet. Today, we will begin a new chapter in our journey with Jesus. Today, we begin to walk with him through his trial and his response to injustice. <laughs> it is unprecedented. How so? Listen to what John records in John chapter 18, beginning in verse 12. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. I still can't believe what we're reading. Uh, Jesus has done nothing wrong except for healing the sick, offering the forgiveness of sins, and yet we have witnessed his betrayal. And now he's arrested. But notice it wasn't just an arrest. It says in verse 12 that they bound him. Now, this binding was probably standard, like cops would handcuff a perpetrator now. But we should think back to the sacrificial lambs before their slaughter, like in Psalm 118, or even think about the offering of Isaac on the altar from Genesis 22. It's the same picture. And then in verse 13, it tells us that Jesus was brought to Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas. What we're seeing is much like what we see today. Politics are real. And even those who hold the title are not really in charge. That's what's happening here. Now, it's true, Caiaphas was the high priest that year and would be so for 18 years. But though Caiaphas would be the one of the longest reigning high priests of the first century, his father-in-law, Annas, was likely the one who was in charge. Today, in sports, uh, teams may have a head coach, but trust me, the general managers and the owners are the real players in the game. The same is true here. Annas was upset with Jesus. He had a hatred for Jesus because Jesus disrupted his business operations by cleaning the temple twice. This may be why Jesus was brought before him and before Caiaphas. And in case we forget about Caiaphas, John reminds us that he was the one who declared it's better that one man die than the whole nation perish. Though what he meant was something far different, but his words were still true. My encouragement for you today is to look at Jesus as the model for responding to injustice in your life. Jesus is God, and he could have squashed every person in this process. But he didn't. He remained humble and allowed the events to play out exactly as they needed to. In Luke 18, we are reminded that God is a patient God. He withholds his wrath till the very last person is saved. Vengeance is mine, declares the Lord, according to Romans 12. When we remember this, we can wait on him. We can live like him. So my encouragement to you is let's do it today.